I would like to say in three, in two, one, we are like. Yeah. We are live. So good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Well, it's an afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you to, for joining us on the Debrief TV show. Um, it's always an honor and a privilege to be here with each and every one of you. Uh, we hope that you had a really, really good week, weekend. Um, coming into come on, coming off into the coming off of the weekend into the week. We hope that you had a really, really good week. Uh, we are soon to experience some weather, and we ask that you would please, you know, take all the necessary steps and precautions to safeguard you and your family so that we, you know, we don't have anyone out there affected by any upcoming weather. So we always like to say, you know, be safe, you know, follow the protocols, follow the, the websites for the Barbies, uh, Met Office and the DEM and any other platform that they may be out there that you could follow that are legit and not passing on fake news. So we ask that you just follow the protocol, but just stay safe while you are doing it. But we have a very interesting show tonight um, for you. But as always, we'd like to beg your indulgence while we share the link uh, of the show. And we ask that those who are joining us swiftly, that you also share the link with your people as well, that they can share and like our page so know, to know where we go live. So just give me one minute while we copy the link and send it out to the, the guests or the panel rather. And so bear with us while we send the link out. One second. Well, you can feel free to, to share with all your friends and families too that are there waiting. All right. Um, all right. All right. The link is over to you guys. So you can share it as you feel free to. If we have any, we may have a little bit of internet difficulties. Uh, we're predicting that based on the fact that the weather is going to be a little challenging tonight. So if it is that we have that, please just excuse us and stay with us. We will come back live to you if it needs, if need be. So just letting you know up front, we may have um, some weather thing over there. We ain't even started yet and people got questions. All right, just give us a little bit more minute um you guys have the link i just i'll let the guests just be able to share the link as well so please just bear with us um, i just have to share it as well we are going to be taking your questions as well so feel free to have that those questions ready um to ask the the, pan, the guests, as I said, it's a very interesting, interesting show tonight. So we, we are hoping that you would have some good questions. We ask that you also keep it clean, keep it positive, because I know some people um, they like to come on the show with some questions that don't necessarily have anything to do. Don't take it personal, you know, so keep the question focused. Um, sorry, iPhone, can you identify yourself, please? You know, we don't have anyone and you can have some good questions. Sorry, that is, um, I believe that is Matt Lito, my other team member. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I guess he's observing. <laughs> She's observing. Okay. So you are, can you confirm that is her for sure? I'm not seeing any name or anything. And sometimes Zoom do get cross in these things. And you may have somebody on your platform that is more of a, um, what do you call it now? A spam than it is an actual person. So please verify. Okay, before. Sister Maplito, can you identify yourself, please? Hello, Fabian. Hi, good evening. Um, the posts were seeking confirmation. Okay, is she ob she's just observing or she can join via Facebook or she's. Okay. Um, She's just observing, Fabian. Sorry. Yes. Is is that an option or? Uh, she may have to join on Facebook because she would make the, the thumbnails a little bit smaller. So send her the if you can send her the link so she can join on Facebook. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Good. 
I'm just going to put her back in the waiting room, but if she can join fire face, but that'll be good. Right. All right. So that we have more stump space on the platform. All right. So we've taken the time we needed to share the link. I hope this is good enough for everyone. But I said, feel free to, um, if you have shared the link, we can go ahead and start. As I said, there are some questions lined up already um, here from some persons. We want to say good evening to everyone, all of our uh, regulars on the show. Good evening to you. And we are good to go. All right. So good afternoon. Good evening again, again for the, all those who are joining with us. If you're a first timer on the, the Brief TV show, we ask that you would take your the time out to just like us so you can follow us and you can know when we do come live every single Tuesday here on the Debrief TV show. So we're asking and encouraging you to like our page and follow us. Now tonight we have a very interesting show um, and we also wanna thank both uh, the teams for agreeing to be able to come on to the show and be able to speak to their race. Um, in this upcoming presidential race for the NUPW. And we have a very interesting panel, interesting panel today. But let me first start by introducing uh, the host, uh, myself as moderating for tonight, Kimar Safri. And we have Simon Ali, the host of the Debrief TV show. We also have Kimar Stewart, uh, Kimar Stewart another host of the Debrief TV show as well. But I also wanna take this time to introduce the teams here on the, um, <clears throat> On the on this live as well, which would include both uh, Kimberly's Kimberly Agard team, which is taking New Guard, and Fabian Jones team, which is Team Vision for the work for the work interest workers interest Excuse now, me. right? Um, and those were the two teams that are on both Kimberly and Fabian Jones are vying for the position of president of the NUPW and we've all seen, we've all heard um, of the whole um, campaign that both of them are running. We've also seen slips, um, videos of some of them as well. Uh, we've seen a bit for Facebook posts. So we uh, should be aware of this campaign and this race for the NUPW, one of Barbados biggest, if not Barbados biggest um, union or represented group. And so it is our pleasure to have both the groups here. Um, Kimberly Eagard is here as president, but she's also represented by John Paris, which is a part of her team as well as Mr. O'Brien Smith. And we have Fabian Jones team who is represented as well by, uh, she don't want me to call her Miss Cave, <laughs> uh, Daria Cave as well. So there's two teams here. We're gonna have a good conversation uh, but what before I start, I would like to open, give both the teams, presidents, a, a chance of just uh, giving us a brief of their campaign before we get into any further conversation and then we can be joined by the other members. So over to you, um, Ms. Um, Eagard, as a lady uh, um, in, in the race for the two, uh, I'm going to give it to you tonight to be able to Give us the opening of your, your, your mandate and what it is that your team is looking to do. Hi, good night, Kimar. Um, I want to say thanks to you and your colleagues for having me this evening and also including my team members. I also want to say good evening to Fabian and the other persons from his team as well. And also good night to the viewers. I look forward to the interaction. I hope that we have a very good and productive show. Um, taking New Guard is what we would call the perfect blend. We have um, persons that are, let us say, a bit young, full of youthful exuberance. We have persons who are quite au fait with the organization with a fountain of knowledge about the organization. What we all have in common is that we are committed. And this has been proven because we have held persons on the team or almost everyone on the team 
has held positions throughout the NUPW from the um, management committee level to the national council level. Some of us um, serve on the executive, the current executive, and some of them, I think John and O'Brien would avoid before for executive positions. So the commitment to the organization um, cannot be called into question for sure when it comes to my team. And so recognizing the position that NUPW has fallen, um, albeit an unfortunate position in the eyes of many of our members, we believe that amongst ourselves, bringing what we have to the table, that we are the perfect combination needed in these things. We can't have, you know, they say too much good is not good and too much bad is not bad. So we are, like I said, the perfect blend for the NUPW in these times. We have come together. We were working on our campaign from January this year. So we have put a lot of thoughts into, we have put a lot of thought into what we want to present to the members, what we believe the members need at this time, what the organization needs. And so we will be sharing these messages throughout the campaign. We are willing to engage members on our social media platforms face to face, despite the um, COVID environment, we have to be conscious of that. So whereas we would normally be canvassing departments by departments, some persons are not comfortable with that, however, so we have opened our social media platforms, uh, Instagram, Facebook, and this gives persons ways to contact us. Um, as I said before, each member brings a particular skill set or a particular interest within the organization. And so we have come together and said that we will try to put our best foot forward in the interest of of the membership in a way that puts a UPW to go beyond the 77 years that it is now and beyond those years because the organization, despite what people think, and we can understand the reason why people think the way they do about the, the union and let us say the trade union movement altogether. But in truth and in fact, the trade union movement is relevant, is quite relevant. And so we want to, to, to show members or show persons, workers, the reason why they should be part of NUPW, why we want them to give us the opportunity to be the next executive. And we are, we are promising to look after the workers and bring NUPW back to a place where it focuses on the members. The, the members are the primary reason for our existence. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and uh, Fabian, go ahead. Thank you. Hi, good evening to the panel. Good evening to the contestants. Good evening, Barbados, and good evening to the public workers of Barbados. I wish to present to you Team Vision for the Workers' Interest now. We are a team of activists and trade unionists who have wide experience from the divisional level to the council level. I'm the sole person who, have served, um, who has served on the executive thus far. And I feel good about that because I'm bringing fresh, fresh blood to the management committee of the NUPW. We are a team of policy and action, and we are seeking to bring some creative and innovative ideas to move the NUPW forward. We have a three-pronged approach whereby we have brainstormed, and these policies would have been formulated over the past two years, by the way. We would have been observing, um, I said the past two years because that's when we started to write them down, but these policies are from years of observation of the, the challenges why the NUPW has been, um, there's a perception that the NUPW is on the decline. So we have a three-pronged approach of internal reform, where we want to get the union's machinery up and working, and that would be the divisional committees, the executive. We want to harmonize the interaction with these um, committees, um, also the, the council and the secretariat. That's the engine room of the union as a member's organization. 
that connects us to the wider membership. And everything that we do is based around the membership. Hence, we have it in our name, Workers Interest Now. Our second problem would be restoring our national image to have a, a, a bigger voice on labor issues and to speak to wider social issues because the union is an advocate in the society. And, you know, people look on and they just think about the fight, the lobbying for wages and so on. But a union can speak to, you know, non-communicable diseases. We can speak to natural disasters, crime and violence and so on. That's what a Fabian Jones presidency would look like. The third problem is the regional and international image. We hope to restore that. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but the NUPW is the Harrison College of the trade union movements in the Caribbean. Um, we have been long sought after for advice, um, you know, technical and otherwise, from other sister unions across the union, from across the region, sorry. And somehow that does not seem to be the the, the status that we hold anymore. So we're going to form alliances and reach out to our brother and sister unions and try to have more dialogue and try to actually shape and lead the narrative like we used to do back in the days of old to help to restore our, our, our image at that level. And we also plan to have wider alliances internationally with NGOs and um, anyone who falls into this social democracy philosophy, which grounds us. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Simon? Yeah. Um, a special good evening to everyone on the panel. I want to thank all of you for being a part of the Debrief TV show. Um, I think basically the, the main thing that will be on the minds of, of most Barbadians is the way forward um, for the union. Um, based on all that they've been seeing, they've been seeing a lot more of the challenges and, and so on in the media. So I want to ask both Kimberly and Fabian that what would be your view um, for the union forward under your leadership? So we can start with Kimberly and then we can also hear from Fabian. Okay, Simon, um, as I said in my opening, the state or the perception of NUPW is quite an unfortunate one. One that we um, see as very important to change and work on. The trade union movement, as I said, is very, very, very important to the livelihoods of workers, despite what people may think. Um, imagine if persons think that their working environment is hard now, it would be way worse without the trade union movement being involved. Under our leadership, we propose to bring the union back to our members and persons may not understand what that means in terms of your question. But the reason why things are the way they are now is because our members do not actively participate in the union and in the decision making of the union in terms of the policies, in terms of what we come to the public and say, how we represent them and represent their colleagues. The members have been excluded from NUP, when I say NUPW, understand what I'm saying. The members have been excluded from the decision making within NUPW. That is the first thing that needs to be done. The members have to be welcomed back. Throughout the past weeks, we have been hearing about a lack of representation. And mm. in, so if we are in truth and in fact honest, we would admit that we do have some deficiencies within the organization. And so the move would be for us to fix those um, deficiencies, eradicate those deficiencies. And then we have to look at strengthening our secretariat. Years gone by, workers relied solely on the union and the industrial relations officers to fix their problems. But workers now are more educated and have more knowledge at their fingertips. So where persons would have been a bit more patient and relying solely on the IR officers or, or relying on the expertise of the union, persons now want action and want action now. We have to cater to what our members want. The current position of NUPW 
we cannot or we do not. And one of our main goals will be to strengthen the secretariat, where the secretariat is in a position to listen more to the membership, to engage the membership. Our methods in which we do things are very archaic. And so we have to up our ante. We have to in, in, engage persons more. We have to go back to our shop stores where who are our foot soldiers and our ears on the ground. We have to, to use social media more. Social media is hardly used um, in the union. The way how we reach our members, the secretariat, as I said before, needs to be strengthened, dialogue, needs to happen between the secretariat, the IR officers, the executive uh, members, not, a, not, the, not the opinion of a select few. When, when the general secretary speaks, and that is a position that we also need to, that we also need to get confirmed because we know over the past couple of weeks, because of the current state of the, the general secretary and deputy general secretary positions that has caused a bit of stir. And so we know, we as public servants know that if you are not confirmed in your job, it lends to a bit of insecurity. And we cannot have the person, whosoever that person may be, being in a seat and not being comfortable or sure or secure in their, in their work. So as I said before, in ways to take an UPW forward, we need to update our processes, the way that we do things, the way how we relate to our members, the way how we, we, we cater to our members, the way how we represent our members. We need to make sure that we are taken back to a place of respect because I think Brother Fabian would have um, alluded to it, but NUPW and I would have represented NUPW at the Caribbean Public Service Association annual conference about seven times. I also represented C2 SAB um, at PSI conferences. And I know how persons rely and look towards NUPW for sound advice. And that was, that was times gone. So we need to bring that back, as I said, one of the main focuses of Team New Guard will be to give a UPW back to the members so that whatever our decisions are going forward, it is that of the members, what the members want, what the members say, how the members feel so that when we come out, workers can own our decision, can own our policy because they know that they were included in whatsoever comes from NUPW going forward. Go ahead, uh, go ahead baby. Yes, thank you. Um, I didn't see a question, Simon was asking. Yeah. Okay, in relation to how we're going to fix the image of the union going forward, basically that's the context. Yeah, yeah, the context moving forward, yeah. Under your leadership, what would you do? Right, so once again, we're going to get the divisional committees up and working because this is the link to the wider membership. So relationships, we found that relationships would be key. And we want bipartisan relationships as well because part of the perception is um, politicization of the union. So I believe in forming these relationships and reaching out to more um, bipartisan trying to find more um, bipartisan linkages. I believe that we can also address that issue and through our divisional committees. You see, um, we, we want to get these committees up and running and we want to also engage the shop stores who oftentimes uh, populate these committees. And these are links for the individual departments. So we want to have a real-time communication through these divisions to the departments and it can also filter back into the union and then there's a sense of dialogue. Yes. Um, in relation to the NUPW, um, we have staff resource issues there. So a staff audit would be required there so that the IROs can treat to, to more um, grievances. But the structure of the NUPW is built in such a way that the, IRO are, the IROs are not um, they don't have to deal with all because if you have divisional committees and shop stores functioning, a lot of grievances don't reach that level. 
So we want to have an UPW speaking to people. Um, we want our Facebook page and Instagram pages to be more vibrant. There'll be WhatsApp blasts. You know, you'll be sitting on there and you'll be saying something. So there'll be a membership audit and numbers and so on so that you can blast stuff um, to a person's phones and so on. And then we lobby for benefits for the workers. We're going to widen the scope of it. So we'll be looking for health and education, transportation and energy incentives. So that, you see, oftentimes um, what we do is seem to be limited to salaries and just the money aspect. So we'll be treating to the, actually we have cradle to grave policies that the workers would feel more of a part of. I hope that helps to explain some of what Team Vision will be doing to, to reach out to the membership and to help to clean up the image and to yeah. rebuild the confidence. Uh, good night. Uh, good night to everyone. Good night to the viewers. Um, good night, panelists. Good night to all the guests. Good night. I'm listening to you both. I get that both your visions can work. Um, Fabian, you explain what I would consider to be a more, uh, the approach of a technocrat, uh, fixing the technical issues. Uh, what can be articulated more that of like a grassroots uh, type of approach. And I think all two are relevant to uh, the union in this day and age. Uh, so if, um, you know, whoever wins, I would hope that you would incorporate the other um, in terms of vision and trying to implement a proper plan um, for the union. <clears throat> uh, but I just want to agree with you both and say that the union has had a hit as it relates to the public perception and to how the public views the union. I myself, um, I, I can say I don't know much about the technical side of the union. So I will look forward to hearing and, and looking forward to seeing the WhatsApp blast and the communication strategy uh, improving. And I definitely want to see uh, Fabian discussions outside of just like the wages and, and, and the like. Uh, but my question really is, um, there has been a sense of what I call political interference in the running of the union. And persons are saying that the political parties have a very heavy influence uh, on candidates, especially presidential and, and general secretary candidates um, in union relations. So what are your guys' thoughts on that? And if we can continue to that perception that political parties have a heavy hand um, in union union representation on the your uh, potential leadership. <clears throat> who, who want to take it? You're going to take your muted if you were talking. Oh, sorry. I was. Um, you know, we we started the trend here of letting um, the lady go first. So I was just checking to see if she was going to continue that trend. If we were going to continue that trend. I was reply, also waiting uh, to see if they would give you the opportunity now to speak first. So <laughs> go ahead, Fabian, since you're on it. <laughs> or any of your team members that want to take it, because we do have some of your other members. So feel free to. Okay, I want to make a profound statement. Um, you have heard it before that Team Vision will be friend of all, satellite of none. Um, I also want to remind members and citizens that the political parties in the region came out of the trade union movement and there was always that interaction with um between trade unions and political parties but somehow persons represented in such a way that they did not lose their identity as they transitioned from one to the other and their integrity were never questioned in such a way um, so i believe that individuals caused this by in certain actions you know um you can't follow the person if they're um if they have a political home um long before persons um come into the trade union movement sometimes persons are members of groups parties and so on but the thing about it is to have the integrity when you come into the trade union movement to remain grounded and to always see the members in um in your scope as you treat to them so like I said, bipartisan approaches will help to address that issue. 
but I believe that there was a perception that the the linkages were more concentrated on one side and not evenly um, shared or treated to over the over the years. So that led to some form of polarization of the union. So sometimes when one government in you know uh, we have a culture of BLP to DLP, and you know they're both labor governments, and I, I find comfort in the fact that. Um, Labour governments wants they remain true to their philosophy, which is also social democracy, a philosophy which is also shared by the trade union movement. I believe that the workers should always be at the focus. However, um, due to the vagaries of the vagaries of politics, sometimes persons um, shift the agenda and the narrative is a bit um, blurred at times. But I strongly believe that um, the linkages that you form how you distribute those linkages um, along bipartisan lines would really help to, to um, debunk that, I don't want to say it's a myth, but that perception that there's political um, interference. I don't doubt that. Um, you see, I would not say that there is a big move, but the union is made up of persons from all parties, and it's possible that you can have a faction who is um, behind one person or the other. And of course, they will come with some subjective moves um, that would obviously be along party lines. So you have to manage that too as an administrator in the union. I think, I think one of the things that Kimar, before Kim Lee come on to allude to is that sometimes even though that it is fine that people have, you know, as you said, first people may have political um, homes at first because you know everybody may have whether they like a political party or in a political party everybody has their own you know uh, political favorites um, in terms of party one of the things I think we, we look at is that it's overly exposed as you said earlier that there are some people that knew how to play that well they were of a polit political party but they played so well that they were as you said um, you know friends of none when it comes to the labor or when it comes to industrial it's satellites of none, satellite. satellite of none, sorry, when it came to industrial matters. But of lately you can see where people side with a political party. If you because if you go through the history of the BUT, which is um Barbara's uh, unit teachers, there that is seemingly like all the leaders were falling underneath this them category where they each were um either former ministers or they were all um, in the political field of the Democrats. So the entire leadership, when you look at it, has a serious tie to the, 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 the Democratic Labour Party. So people will question that and say, well, this is like a them, a them thing. So then we'll lean towards the union. And when they question, uh, when they question, you know, uh, it, it, like how they said, Pedro Shepard may be vying for a position now, allegedly in the in, in St. Michael uh, Southeast. So you might say when they speak, they don't speak like if they're speaking on the behalf of members, they speak like they're speaking on behalf of a party. And so that, that is why I mean that people overplay their hand and not nothing wrong with actually being in a political party, but overplaying their hand and we sometimes are lost as if it is representing the interests of the people or interests of your political party, are you winning a particular seat? And I think that that's what we mean by seeing the political interference in, in a lot of things that is going on now. Right? We have to be humanitarians. <laughs> True. Well, okay. Go ahead, Kimberly. If any of your team want to jump in at anything, you can feel free to. Okay. Um, the trade union movement, or many of the political parties were born out of the trade union movement. I have no issue with it going from that direction because I see if you are, a, if you are there to serve persons, if that is what you are about, being of service to people, and you see entering to elective politics as your way to serve people at a greater level, then fine. I do not think though that there is a place in the union for politicians. So I believe if you are a trade unionist and you want to serve your members on a greater level or you want to serve a particular constituency or a group you think you have something to offer at the national level, that is fine. However, the issue comes about when you come into the trade union movement with the sole intention of or under the guise of, of serving the members, but you're only there to use it for a political platform. I, that is a fundamental issue that I have. 
Sorry, we need uh, to Kimberly, begin. Yes, not please. to cut you. I see David Denny uh, seem to be in. I think he's on someone's team. Yes, he's part of Team Vision. Okay, so can I be him? Just checking. Yes. Sorry to cut you, Kimberly. Go ahead. No problem. We need to be able to separate the powers. We know that being inclined to a particular party is your national right, your constitutional right. However, when you get within the gates and the walls of the union, which you have also pledged your allegiance to, you must be able to do that with integrity. You must be able to separate the powers and know that when you are within the gates and walls of a trade union, that you are about the members and what serves the members. You are not there to advance the policy or the agenda of any political party. That is where we run ourselves or we have run ourselves into problems before. And then, as you said, Kimar, it is so blatant in some cases, and that causes um, some level of discomfort amongst members, because despite, despite that, the trade union movement would be made up, let us speak about NUPW, would be made up of persons who voted or support the Barbados Labour Party, and would be made up of persons who support the Democratic Labour Party. And what I have found, what I have heard from on the ground, from those persons who care nothing about politics, that they are tired of the organization being painted by a particular brush. However, also, there are persons that despite being inclined to a particular party, when it comes to the bread and butter issues, they do not care. The, 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 the public service would have suffered um, a retrenchment program under the Democratic Labour Party. There's no way that anyone can say that persons who voted for the Democratic Labour Party said, oh, you know what, it's fine, it's my party that's sending me home. The Barbados Labour Party would have conducted a retrenchment program as well, and it affected persons' pockets. And I know that they themselves did not say, well, you know what, it's my party that I voted for that sent me home. So when the organization that they pay to represent and defend them comes out and shows a particular leaning to a particular side, then that is where the issue comes about. We cannot separate persons or we cannot tell persons because they are in a trade union that they cannot, that they cannot um, be inclined to a particular party. However, it must be demonstrated that despite you're leaning that you have the workers' interest at the forefront. It is the workers that you are there for. And that is what matters what, when you are in a leadership position within the trade union, even not even being the president or on the executive, but even sitting around the national council table. There were times before when um, under past presidents, when you look around the national council table, you know, you would hear, oh, this decision was made not by, you know, by this particular group because they support this particular party. But then when you look around the national council table, there were members of the other party who sat around the table, but the decision was not made to favor the party. It was made to favor the organization and favor the members. So that is what needs to continue or that is where we need to get back to. We need to separate those, those, those interests. We need to know that when we are, when it is the national elections time, you put on whatever color hat you want to wear. That is fine. But when you get into the walls of the union, it is not about party. It is about the members, the members' interests and the future of the organization. It is about integrity. It is about service. It is about representing the workers the best way. However, I will add though, that there are times that probably a relation, relationships that you have with particular, particular ministers or particular PSs or whatever, can, can let us say avoid a lot of the noise that comes about because where you have a relationship and this was enjoyed before, where persons can call and nip a dispute in the bud. You call and you say to, your, to, to someone that you may know, you know, but it, it has to be done 
to the advantage and to the benefit of the workers. The workers are to be put first. The interest of the workers is what matters, not a political party or your personal interest. And it's sad to say that that is the perception out there now. Right. Just let me read. Let me read some comments here from the the, the Facebook. I I seen Stephanie Chase. Um, good night to all of you that are tuning in. You all have a lot to do. Um, you all have a lot of work to do to regain trust and respect of your members. I'm also seeing a Chernell Yard. I would always say trade union leaders should be neutral, even though they support particular uh, party rights. Of worker, but it, uh, sorry, their support, a particular party rights of workers should be paramount. Um, just taking some other. Um, good evening, uh, Stephanie. Again, she's saying good evening all. I also believe that the way union rep communicate with its members, along with the public, needs to improve. Um, I seen Jermaine Bedford in here. He's hoping that some of his queries can be con um, looked at. They're talking about wages are needed as bills are higher in some cases. Um, some, so I'm just getting some more comments here. Uh, but yes, I want to say seemingly based on the comment trend here that a lot of people, and this may be your membership, and I would like to hear from your, your, your uh, other members here, what do they feel um, and what are they hearing on the ground as it relates to the confidence that people have in the union, and and I don't want us to to look at it in a technique and in, in, in this um, vague way, but on the real end, that people um, like Simon who have been in think they're all a part of this union, and they all see they all lost confidence. Some people saying they ain't paying the union. Some people saying that they're giving up their union fees, and a number of other things. So I'm just asking, what do people think about? This in particular, as it relates to the confidence level, um, in the confidence level of the part of it, um, of the union, and how can you guys look to build back the confidence level in the union and address and bring back members? Kimar, I'll jump in here. Daria, team Fabian. Yes, please. Gentlemen, you know, first, good evening. I really see this as a vital moment for unionism, for activists, for civil society, for youth to achieve something transformative, like some kind of transformative change for generations to come, to be honest. This is a critical moment. COVID-19 has exacerbated gender inequities, reports of rising violence against women, higher economic impacts, things costing more, wages staying the same, unpaid caregiving. Kimar, this, <laughs> this is a time for real talk. The fact that women work in more insecure, low paid and informal jobs, we have to talk real. Anyway, the meat of my portfolio. When I'm talking to members, thousands and thousands now, accessing justice, accessing training, accessing housing, good health care. How are we getting these off? the ground in a powerful way. Over the last few years, what has been happening in the unions, I'm not talking only about NUPW, the unions have to step up in how they are taking care of their members. Take training and education. The members are talking about daycare. Daycare is not going down in price. They need daycare in town, about where they work, in their work. Nobody's providing that. 
the trade union has to step in there. The NUPW has to step in there and take how, care of its members. But how? How? The question is how. We're saying to be by that. providing the space. Have you seen the space of NUPW? Uh, no, I'm not a member. Sorry, I don't think I privy to well, go this space. Well, let me let me convince you to become a member, sir. I'm the, not. A, sorry, I'm the, not. Uh, I'm not a government worker. The team vision for the workers' interest now has plans to create daycare facilities at the Del Dalkeith headquarters and working with the private sector and the public sector to create creches in people's work, in members' workplaces. Number two, the tutoring that we have started with Jeff Brooms, we have to expand that. COVID did a hell of a thing with primary school students and secondary school students. We have to step in. We have to take care of our members. We have on the books how we're going to do that, what is going to, how it's going to be financed, and how we're going to roll it out. Tutoring of primary and secondary school students, essential. Providing scholarships, essential. Stop mucking around, man. We have to talk real business. Are these things that the union, um, I'm just asking, provide in, in the sense, and, and if you're talking about this in terms of having um, their nurseries and having all the, are these things going to be free to the union members? Are they going to be... Uh, they are subsidized? free. To, no, Kimar, they're free with your subscription to, the, to uh, be a member. So I'm you're going to give the nurse. You're going to give the, the nursery free, but based on the decline in the numbers of persons in the union by perception, how is then the fund? How is then the union? And you're talking about. Um, I'm seeing on the website you have an in excess of ten thousand people. Now, for for example, you're you're talking about moving. I probably moving my child from this nursery to the NUPW nursery because I pay a particular fee per month. Is the NUPW going to have enough space to facilitate all these people? Enough space, you said? Yeah. Yes, we will have enough space. Let me tell you something more, um, Kimar. The point that I don't want you to get away from mm -hmm. is that the trade union from time immemorial has been the house of taking care of the, its members. If our members are having mob a ton of difficulties trying to figure out how to pick up their child, when to pick up their child, how the child is going to be safe at ABC time. You don't think that the trade union, the, the union should step in and take care of its members and make sure that those children are safe? Of course. Another thing, the training of civil servants the webinars and the workshops, that can't be just government. We have to assist in the productivity of our civil servants. Productivity is not Barbados's, Barbados government's business. It is Barbados business. The Academy of the Trade Union has to start working to bring up the workers. You know, workers, Simon, you can step in here because you and I have had many debates on this. But so if I can bring when this somebody, mind. one minute, when somebody sells their labor, they are a worker. So a worker is everyone from the DPP to the postman to the sanitation service. All of these are workers. So let us get clear that the NUPW and trade unions are in the business of working for all of its members. And its members are not one thing. Okay, fair enough. But Simon, come in here, Simon, as a, as a union leader, what, what do you think about some of these ideas? I can use you to, to kind of critique these ideas in terms of having a, the nursery free for all and some of the other things that uh, are 
uh, Daria is, you know, saying, unmute your mic. Daria. Daria, sorry, sorry. My apologies, Daria. But it's better than Miss K, so. <laughs> what do you think you're saying, man? <laughs> right, I, I think that, um, well, the union has to expand its mandate. If you saw some of the comments coming up in the thread, I was mm -hmm. looking at them earlier before I began to um, take a nod. Um, the reality of it is that the times are changing. So once the times that we are living in is changing, it means then that the, the union has to retool itself. It has to become relevant for the time that is in. And if the members, if the members of the union are saying, well, look, the whole issue of daycare is a serious issue. Well, the union has to go about it, look into to find ways that it can meet those needs of its members. But at the end of the day, too, the union must still look at cost too. We don't want a situation where the union takes on too many things and it doesn't have enough funding. It doesn't have enough manpower and resources to, to fund itself and maintain itself. So Simon, that's one thing we have to be, that's Simon, one we have to be careful of. Simon, sorry, dear. Let me just step in there. You know, the most horrible thing that a teacher can hear is when someone hears something like free daycare, that the, the thing that they go to, their immediate go-to, and I'm not saying that you've done this, their immediate go-to is, do we have the money for it? Guys, what is the most vulnerable, the most special, the most, the most important people in our society? Who are the children, they? Children, the children, the human resource, the children. We have to take care of them. We're not taking, we, when you hear about a five-year-old in a house by itself, then you, then everybody gets all up in arms. I am saying that the five-year-old has to be the priority. Right, so, first. Right. so, right. So, well, it may be first, I, I, I say I'm just looking at the practical end of it, that if the union could take it on, also the union don't take break and then somebody got to take care of the union too. But um, other- uh, The for, union has maybe, resources. Well, fair enough. I agree. Right. I, I um, think, go ahead, Simon. Sorry. Yeah, that's one quick comment. Um, um, I know we're still on the daycare, but what we have to look at too is the whole climate in terms of cost of living. That was another comment that came up. I'm not too sure if you're going to go into that in more detail. Yeah. But I, I do believe that um, any new team that wants to take the union forward has to be a very um, loud voice, has to be very vociferous with regards to the cost of living in Barbados because. If wages of themselves are not really increasing and the cost of living when it comes to petrol, when it comes to buying food items and so on, if the union is not able to add its voice to put pressure on the powers that be, whether it is the um, business class as well as the government, you're going to find a situation where people, the same um, group that you want to represent, feel as if no one is really championing, championing their cause with regards to the high cost of living. But that's one thing that we are hearing on the radio calling programs. We even saw it in some of the comments here in this chat. How would you want to, the union to address this whole issue of the high cost of living and the, the cost of items in the supermarket? And that's for everybody to answer if they want to. Well, we saw, we saw, Simon, just add to that though, we saw that um, the NUPW would have been challenging the BCCI yes, as it pertains yes. to the cost of living. And right. I don't know if that is based on the fact that that falls underneath the, the, the president. I don't know if he's, I don't know if Ken is still the president or former president, but the president at the time or the union at the time. So is that something that this particular group well, carry, um, forward. carry forward this high cost? I, I, and how would you continuously lobby, as I must say, the government for an increase in salary in wages? Because knowing the fact that three years ago, the government would have given an increase. And, and also the FTC, the, the Fair Trading Commission and so on, what would the union do to put pressure on these organizations? Is it going to call for a new um, consumer rights association or to strengthen the, the existing consumer um, rights association in Barbados? What are your Funny views you on that? Funny you should ask that. Funny you should. Let me, let me give Kimberly, hold on, let me give Kimberly team a chance to answer then and then come back to a Fabian team. One Can thing I want to think? put in quickly though, Kimar, is that I wrote a couple of articles about just that. The Department okay. of Commerce, how are they taking care of and how are they relating to fixing prices? These prices, how you could buy something in a gas station 
that is a different price in a supermarket one and right. a supermarket two. Who is regulating that? I wrote the articles. Okay, I'm asking them. Me. I'm saying that the NUPW or trade unions have to put themselves in a place to create consumer groups that will lobby and advocate All against right. these things. Just let me get in. Okay, well, hold on. Just let me get in, Kimberly. Team Kimberly, anyone from your team, Kimberly, are you as directed by you? You can direct anyone to take the question. You're on mute, Kimberly. Um, I don't know if John wants to speak to her. I can speak to her, but I'll allow John to yeah. okay. see if John wants to add to it. Okay, go ahead, John. Okay, um, good evening to all. As it pertains to the question of how do we change the perception um, and get members involved again, we do have to work on our public relations. And what we have to recognize is at the end of the day, again, as Kimberly would have stated earlier, we would have done our background checks and everything. And we have to be real with ourselves. Most of the members is like, what can the union do for me? How is my $26 being spent? So at the end of the day, yes, it's about representation and making sure you represent the workers to the best of your ability, but also it's about member empowerment. So in order to do so, um, as stated earlier by Kimberly, we have to really build back the shop stores um, um, section within the union. And we do that by, again, retraining, having the shop stores through the Public Workers Academy get retrained. We have them um, as our PR persons. They are within the departments. They know their staff, okay? And so what we have to do is get all these shop stores together. Let us come up with a plan of how we are going to get people interested in the union again. We got to, um, you made mention of it, grassroots from the bottom up. And we got to work towards showing people that, you know what, this union is for me and we can see an improvement in the way things are being done. And how that is done, my portfolio is um, reviving the Public Workers Academy. So for instance, what we would do is use the member database, right? And what we try to do is to reach as much members of, as possible, have them pass through the Public Workers Academy, where we not only look to empower them in terms of um, issues that may affect them, um, whether it be mental health issues, um, about investments or whatever, but what we want to do is let them know more about the union and what, uh, the, the, what the union stands for, right? And through bringing members to the union, uh, through education, what you do now is you're also improving in terms of networking. So for instance, I may come to a seminar from civil aviation. I may have someone from the Ministry of Youth or whatever that I've never met before, but through us coming together, um, as a, a, a unit, we, we now get to know persons from other departments and we start networking and we try and build persons, um, build that camaraderie and that brotherhood and sisterhood again. Also, right, John. We have, okay. Sorry, but, but my, my question, and I understand that, my, my question was more geared towards how uh, would your team um, address this whole issue of the high cost of living, the prices Prices, prices in the supermarkets and elsewhere that seem to be affecting the agents. I, I understand um, your portfolio that you'll be looking at, but how, how would your team, I think probably if Kimberly wants to take it or someone else can, of her yeah, team, they I can will. do that. I sure, will. go ahead. Um, I want to pull back from some things that Daria would have said. Um, the thing about it is that to see what comes with experience or being or institutional knowledge is that over the years, some of what Daria would have suggested would have been approached before. Um, I know that NUPW was looking to start a buyer's club where members made a small contribution to the startup of that because of logistical issues. I think we even had a building secured in Newton, um, but because of some issues that had to be abandoned we were also we were also exploring having, as Daria said also, about the space that we have. And we sit on a prime piece of real estate in Dalkeith. We honestly do. 
and we the prospect was being explored about having a medical facility as well to cater to our members there that was abandoned as well she spoke about um daycare however i know um sister smith uh, when she was the general secretary um elderly care was being explored um there's a building the old school going towards the saint bartholomew's right saint bartholomew's. Uh, building a building in 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 saint bartholomew's that we were being gifted in order to explore that prospect as well so and upw over the years have been looking at ways uh, however, not coming to fruition. We want to change that now. Um, but Absolutely. yeah, we have to. We know that we know and we understand because we are Bajans and we know and we understand that because of the impact of COVID, the government's revenue has significantly declined. And we know also because we listen, we are Bajans, we know that the salary bill is one of the biggest expenses that the government has. However, there are other ways to cater to your members and to, to your workers. They, um, they can offer us plenty um, non-salary benefits where we would be able to see some savings. There are ways to that the other ways that the NUPW can partner with, with organizations, the credit union. The credit union oh, was an organization that was formed out of the bosom of NUPW. However, I don't believe that NUPW, the organization, benefits as much as it should from the, the, the public workers credit union. And we can look at ways to approach the credit union, probably to have lower interest loans or some other programs that would be beneficial to exclusively NUPW members. Um, as I said, um, we look at we, uh, we we look at because we 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 can't look at government for everything. Yes, it is our yeah. employer, but we still can't look at government. We have to think outside the box as it relates to catering to our members. So the 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 way how people when they get fifty everybody gravitates towards BARP because they know the benefits that they derive from being a BARP member. However, my team will make that a UPW in the coming years. It can Tim, be, yes, please. If I may add a question, I, I think some of these things are good and, and, and I'm hearing it. Is, it. is it that these are things that the, that the members want or is these things that the, the members themselves were asking for for this lengthy yeah. period of time, but have not received it? Because sometimes I, I, I know I hear what we plan to do and what we plan to, to whatever address as it relates to the, the members. And I think my, I think my question would be though, are, are, these, are some of these things tried already or why weren't they, why weren't they tried underneath the last presidency for the last four to six years? And you know what? What has stopped some of your policies? What have stopped some of Fabian policy? Let me get in Fabian to see what 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 has stopped some of these policies and why some of these policies were implemented. Mm -hmm. And when, especially when in the time of I always say in the time of plenty, in the time when they had enough to be able to do, why weren't the nurseries built? Why weren't the the medical the, center. the medical center built? Why weren't these things put to 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 people? But now in the time where you're on the decline, where you may be challenged for money, you're challenged for members, how is it possible then for the, 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 the new teams to be able to do it? I remember the last administration wanted to do a lot of things, but when they got into the government and they realized how messed up government was, or they realized that the money wasn't there, they weren't able to do as much as they envisioned. So how do you guys envision doing so much things in a time when it is not plenty in the bank and, 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 and in the membership and um, in, in that, a, declining, a declining um, union or a union that doesn't have confidence in you. Why what, what wasn't it that? Okay, Fabian. Kimar. So let me, um, I could finish off what uh, I was saying yeah. and lead into answering your question. Yeah, I'll give you two minutes so that we give everybody a chance. I okay. give everybody okay. a couple of minutes to speak and then go um, straight into like most organizations or some organizations, NUPW would have suffered an implementation deficit. So the ideas were there. In some cases, the persons at the 
at the table could not get buy-in from the decision-making body. And so for one reason or the other, those plans were not implemented. You had probably some leaders who were visionaries, but to get the buy-in, to get the okay to go forward with it, the persons around the table were not as forward thinking as some. So and this would include, sorry, this would include um, the, the national council, or this would include the president, the president's team, president and his uh, executive, or is it a combination of both? Well, in some cases, a combination of both, but let me the, okay. just given a brief background of the structure of NEPW, the be good. president answers to the national council, the national, despite the ideas of the, of the, of the president, it has to be okayed and rubber stamped by the national council. Anyone here is what a part I, of the national council? I think we all are, except O'Brien. Okay. No, right. So, so y'all so y'all will be a part of the problem. Member. So y'all will be a part of the problem. Some some of these things were before our <laughs> oh, times, and we were not it. there. No, we were not there at the implementation stage. We were okay. there. The idea came up, and we were there just in the discussions. Okay, um, right. these things, as I said, I don't have these things as things that we can deliver to the members. Um, in a short space of time, we need to do some groundwork first in order to cater these. Like you said in time of abundance, they weren't implemented. And now it, the work will be harder. There are more things that need to go in to make these, these in, um, initiatives lucrative. There are some that can happen in the medium term, but there are some that need to be implemented with a lot of research and being sound because COVID-19 has showed us that the way that we used to operate and things that we think were important before or the uh, and things that would that the members and the general public would want COVID-19 has showed us that our way of thinking has to change so that is just what I was saying in, to your uh, to your question that you asked so I'm just saying that a lot of these initiatives that we are thinking about really and truly some of them have to be long-term plans and not right. We can't promise the members that these things will happen in two or three months. So oh, that's, that's, I don't want to make false promises. This is where our these this is our vision. This is where we want to take the organization. However, there are things there, there are funda fundamental issues, foundation things that need to be put in place first. We need to build capital. We need to secure certain things before we can go into that. Because whatever we're going to do, we want it to be sustainable. And that is that matters a lot. Okay, go ahead, um, Fabian, and or, or somebody can go to. Right, so we're trying to get the union on a growth trajectory. We understand that um, the financial resources might be down, but that's where you become creative now. You know, um, yes, some things would have to be put in place and we don't expect these things to be overnight things, but we know that a journey of, of a thousand steps begin with one, the first step. So we have to begin somewhere. So I see, you know, um, creative re recruitment drives to, to build a base. We have to leverage the property we have, um, our academy, our buildings to, to gain maximum um, financial rewards. Uh, we want to also revisit the um, other sources of funding outside of subscription. So we have to revisit the possibly the credit union discussion. Um, we also want to lobby for incentives um, because if persons cannot get a, a wage increase, maybe if you can um, get them some kind of discounted housing, discounted education, energy, or transportation, maybe that will still help them to you know, to spread around their disposable income a bit better. Um, we also want to encourage and facilitate entrepreneurship. Something as simple as, as flea markets on the compound at Dalkeith, you know, persons could, um, <clears throat> persons could pay a, a small something to, to set up there um, or get it at a better incentive. But we want to encourage persons to um, we want to teach persons to fish and not just give them fish as well. And we want to push our discount card because if we can operationalize our discount card and have more businesses recognize it, members can see real-time discounts like a 5 and 10% here. 
you know, um, you spend a hundred dollars and you get ten dollars um, discount. That's great. So persons need to feel, like for instance, you want to follow the pump. Gas is a big issue right now. Discount card, you know, and even get points and so on that, you know, that as you um, spend towards gas, that you get a saving. I think um, over the years, um, the will, yes, we needed the, the buy-in from, from um, the membership of council and executive and so on. But I also believe that uh, a strong president, because president, um, the president leads policy along with the executive. And I believe that once you have the will that you can champion this and you can, you know, you can shepherd such an issue in such a way through your council, through your divisional um, committees, out to your wider membership. And I believe that once you have the will that some of these things can be achieved. My right. sister wants yeah. to... Pardon? But, sorry. Uh, go ahead, Kimar. Sorry, um, O'Brien, uh, sorry, O'Brien, video is still off, but no problem, you're right, you could turn it on. Uh, go ahead, Kimar. Yeah, I wanted to say, uh, I already asked the question. Because Fabian just made a point about, about uh, the president being responsible for policy. Now, there are quite a bit of issues right now uh, within the landscape. Uh, one is that the government is speaking about making public workers, high level public workers, uh, contractual. Uh, and then we're also facing changes to the pension the pension scheme uh, in Barbados, which would, I think, would affect uh, all, all of you here. Uh, so I wanted um, your take, uh, team for team, possibly, uh, what, what can we look forward to in terms of um, negotiations with the respective stakeholders on the two issues that I would raise? raised? Um, or, uh, Tim, you want to you, uh, you give one, one of your team members to go again? You can select your team members you want to answer. No, I don't mind, I don't, I don't mind taking it. Oh, right, go ahead. Right, so in relation to um, pensions at first, um, education will be key there because the the average member and the average worker I find at times do not know um, what they're working towards, how to calculate these things, what their entitlements, entitlements in the face of, you know, severance, retrenchment, or even um, at the end of their work in life, um, you know, when they become a pensioner. So education is going to be key there. And also on the contracts as well, and for the workers, because the contractual arrangement would bring a number of issues. For instance, consider this. Um, the person, the government that you receive your contract under, is possible to feel a sense of loyalty to that government. It's possible to feel a sense of loyalty. So in a situation like that, um, maybe they'll have to be, the contracts would have to be designed in such a way to overlap the 10 years of governments. So um, you have the continuity that we have permanent secretaries right now. But what I would say also is that we have to also educate workers in relation to contracts because some persons might be forthcoming to contracts. There's some persons who, um, for instance, do island hopping. They want to work in Barbados for two years, then go to Miami for another two and so on. So a person like that might want to choose um, a contractual arrangement. So you want to educate persons in such a way that, they're, that they choose something and know what they have bought into. Another aspect of the contract um, education as well would be in relation to facilitating your own um, social security. A lot of persons sign on the contracts and they don't put anything in place. And then in the event of job loss and they realize that they're not covered, but they didn't understand that they could have gone to the NIS and paid a, a nominal fee to secure um, their benefits in the event of a job loss. Okay, ben, if, I, if I could interrupt you here. Sure. Uh, all, all of this seeming like if um, we start in a new union, um, <laughs> because the new I mean, it's, a, it's a new vision, but it seems like a, not a vision, but a new union. It seems like these are things that should have been implemented or should have been there. The union is a, a, a very age union and it should have aged with the time. Um, and it seems like when you're talking about um, helping people to I understand- see the vision, I'm glad you're right? saying the man. But no, but when, it, when, you, when you put questions, put um, answers like, 
you're trying to see the union in terms of helping people to renegotiate contracts or to under, better understand contracts. I mean, that should have been something that should have been there for donkey years because contracts are something that is an everyday thing in businesses. I know some people that are talking about having uh, two contracts with an employee and they don't know which one to follow. So I'm just saying that, well, it, it sounds good. It seems like some of these things are things that are were supposed to be there now and the focus should be on a much bigger picture. Like, how do we, as Simon said, or Kimar says, how do we tackle the, the, the price of, of any supermarket for the for the members? How do we find membership benefits? Sure. How do we how do we help the people? Because um we have not heard in terms of people that are unemployed that maybe not be able to pay you a Jew. How do we help them get some food stuff? How do we help them to find employment through other means in government? How do we lobby for those people? So I think that. Well, these things I'm hearing in some instances sound a little bit good to me. I what I would have been expecting a little bit more because it seemed that we are going back to what should have been the union instead of stuff. what foundational stuff instead of what is the union are going forward. If you understand where I'm coming from, come on, Vivian, oh, if I may, go ahead. Um, oh, Brian. hi, good everyone. Oh, Brian Smith, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, Brian, again, a little disturbance in your voice there. Um, you may want to come forward a little bit. Can you hear me now? Probably, yeah. The headpiece, pull the headpiece closer to you, maybe. The both okay. part. Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Was, we can live with this one. Right. Um, good night again. My name is Norman Smith. I'm taking New Year. we we'll be running for third vice president in the elections of the UPW. Kimar, I, I understand where you, where you, where you are coming from. And the unit is 77 years old, and you, you know sometimes as, as, as you age, you allow a lot of things, some things to go away. And then you got to look back and say, what you did or what you were doing was not really actually in the best interest at that point in time because you were not, you were not tackling certain issues. And you say to yourself, look, that has happened, unfortunately, we, we have to move forward in connection with the things that you are speaking of. And it don't make sense us going back and, and trying to hash out those things. These things are not. These things are here. And but you hook all the crop crook, we have to deal with them head on. You said pensions, pension will affect me. If my son at 20 years old, get in the civil service, it's gonna affect him. It's gonna affect him as well. The contract, it will affect me. July 1st will be 25 years I was in the service as youth commissioner. And if I decided to go and see a contract work, what would that do to my 25 years? So th these are things that our team will be, will be looking at. We'll discuss. And we must discuss because, because at the end of the day, it's not only going to affect me, it's going to affect persons that are coming, I mean, especially young members, which that's my portfolio thing. My profession is working for young people for five years. And the union survival is losing here and are you there, I think. The union, the you as it say, the unions, the union survival is based on young members. We have to engage and the young members are not the young members of nineteen eighty, nineteen seventy. They are more in tune with what is going on and we need to engage them. But everything will affect them, and we need to engage them. All right, thank you. Uh, so yeah, Kimar, so go ahead. Um, add, if I can go ahead. add here to us, you mute it, Kimberly. You mute it, Kimberly. You mute it. Oh, Brian said, um, "What? Yeah. Hi. Okay, hi. we can hear you. We can hear you." And then we know what John would have said in terms of his his aim to educate the members, and so these issues will go or may or be made easier once persons understand what affect their work life we are affiliates to plenty international organizations we are affiliates to regional organizations the caribbean congress of labor the caribbean public services um, association the ilo 
the Public Service International. And these issues can be and are being discussed at the international and regional level as well. So the tackle, to tackle the high cost of gas and the high cost of living and the high cost in the supermarkets is not necessarily an, a, a, a battle that NUPW has to undertake on its own. That is the reason why at the core of the union is solidarity. So we can also lean on our international and regional affiliates to, to, to help tailor our policies that cater to our members, what they would have developed that would have worked, what we have in mind that they would have tried that did not work, how we can tweak it to make it work, or how we would know not to, to go about implementing that policy or so forth. So the, 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 the fight won't be only with NUPW. That is also one of the goals of Team New Guard. We will look to, again, foster good relationships because that has been lost over the years. We will look to, once again, foster good relationships with our regional and international affiliates, where then that we can learn, we can tweet, we can, we can advance the causes of the members and what they want us to cater to. Of course, the high cost of living is really, really sucking everything out of us. And we need a way, we need a sound policy to address that. But we need to know that when that policy comes, it is secure and it is one that we can follow through on. Okay, thank you. Jeremy Stephen is saying Fabian. Um, he wants me to make sure Fabian know he's watching. And he also want me to make sure Kimberly know he's watching. I don't know why you guys got that inside joke. Yeah, but I just passed on the message. I have, I have Hi, a comment Jeremy. here. I have a comment here. Good night, Jeremy. Um, from from um, uh, Mr. Thompson. I don't want to call his first name because I it would tell my tongue. What the union leaders should be doing is tackling the law, policies, terms, and conditions that government contract work because the trend by government presently are heading the way of a contract. One must be able to enjoy a favorable benefit, even if on contract, like building a future. Um, so that's what Thompson is saying. One of my things is that how the union, uh, how your team plans to tackle this, um, going on for probably what he's saying there, because it's on my list, I could better bring it up. How the government tend to tackle the contract workers, um, having put in workers on contract we've heard the talk or would have seen in the paper where it is said that the government is looking to move um permanent secretaries and certain persons to um contract level contract. um i i for one i'm a big supporter of government moving top positions in this country to to contracts because it, it helps in a sense when some of them got to go to go so I can say that that's key Marzavri, that I really, I see value and sense in moving certain things to contract. I'm not a big supporter of uh, people holding positions till the dead. Um, and if they could work till they, 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 it's a, a good retirement age, fine. But I'm not a favor, in favor of nobody holding a permanent secretary position for now to dock a year or frustrating systems or whatever the case may be. But what is the group, the different group, um, opinions or what is your plan or how you plan to tackle government if government plan tends to move in the level in the way of contracts especially for most most of the the high member senior civil servant senior civil servant, servant, servant um, so I mean they probably should put you on contract you know, I just say <laughs> narrow that <laughs> right. but yeah so wait, um so I'll get back over to Kimberly to direct any of your Members, if you want to take it, and then we go to Fabian again. You're muted. You're muted. You're muted, Kimberly. Sorry, sorry. O'Brien right. had. Mute, yeah. um, I think O'Brien wanted to continue on to that. O'Brien. So I um. I'll give O'Brien a couple minutes. So let me. Oh, you back, O'Brien? Okay. Sorry. Okay. Uh, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. Go. You. You heard the. You heard the question. Oh, Do you want okay. to continue on to on speaking to the contract? The, to the by government to, do you want to continue because you had you had started the discussion oh oh, oh yes um y'all can be popping now right yeah yes right yes. right um as, as as i was saying earlier um there's a way of, <laughs> there's 
this was is, is, is a real is a real funny funny situation because as you know the practice as as everyone knows you you are appointed you remain you you go you go up in the service and you are in a position then for something like bam for this to happen that your position can be made into a contract board. Um, what 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 we as a union must do is, is to make sure that our members will not be disadvantaged. Number one, uh, because if if for instance, say me, have twenty five years in the service, and the, pos the position I am in is a high level position and is being made a contract, the government they will ask me, or I will apply for the position. If I don't apply for the position. Then what? Because if going on a contract, can it be seconded to the contract? We know that after after two years or, or, or three years, I'm given up the option to be seconded again and then after I have to decide if I will not go continue on the contract or go back to my to my to my uh, substance to my to find some place for me because at the end of the day I am appointed into the service. So what we must make sure that persons, that the members are not disadvantaged in connection with the contract, the contract work, and we will, we will, and it will have to be a serious, we must have serious negotiation with the government in connection to see if we our members, our members' years of service in, in, in the service. So you're saying basically you're opposed right. to, your team is opposed to it, to the, to the, the contracts? Mark, Mark, Mark. Mark. I'm just asking. I, I can't. I, I, sure. I cannot. No, no, no. I, 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 if you have persons that leave the service and go, or um, that are seconded, the thing is, as I said, you must That's make sure contract. that the members' terms and conditions or their years of service are kept intact at the end of the Okay, fair enough. Because right. remember, like, contract, contracts have a place, you know. Mm. For projects and for I short support term, them. right? Of course. But for short term, mm -hmm. for short term um, instances, for projects, those type of things. But when you have become a career civil servant, as O'Brien, as O'Brien is, is saying, that can cause a problem. I know persons um, support contract work for one way or for one reason or the other. But as O'Brien said, if our members. Um, if a member is approached with a contract and we can educate them as to whether or not their terms and conditions or their, their benefits will be the same and, they, and that they are no less favorable than what they enjoyed within these mainstream central government, then fine. But we want persons that when they accept these contracts, that they are doing so from an educated point and not in a, from a point yeah, of informed. from a point of ignorance. You see, right. but what you also need to understand is that the PSs and the DPSs and the heads of departments they are also members of NUPW. People think that we only cater to the the, the general workers and the school meal servers. I, I heard that the PS I heard that the PSs has a different um union altogether. So that's what no no that, well that's I don't what know, I heard. but we have we have a division <laughs> actually the PSs, the heads of departments and the PSs uh, within our members have a division and it's called division one and they too are represented on national council. So no, that's, they that's can all of have a baby a club Kimberly Pardon? That's not like a baby club. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. They, their seat is as equal okay. as anyone else around the table. But we're just saying that understanding that the, the position of NUPW as it relates to the contract work will come from um, a position after the input of those persons because mm. they are represented. So. Right. Well, I fear enough. No, I, I would not want to take away anybody's benefit. But I understand, though, that yeah. even in looking at a lot of these things, we find that when persons are in position, some of them do get positions um, for political reasons or whatever, and they tend to frustrate the system. They tend to frustrate the government. They tend to, whatever it be, B or D in power. And we find that with these positions, it create a lot of hover. So that's why we love to see that even in this position, it, it does not have a political interference that because many times 
well, people may be debating is the poor people at the bottom that are suffering. Well, people may be stopping sure. certain things. Is other people that are affected or what's not. But right. um, on the same question, go ahead, um, Darren, you want yeah. to come yeah. in? Yeah, thank you so much, Kimar. The thing, we haven't answered Simon's uh, two que uh, Kimar's two questions yet, but I want to put in here that maybe a month or a month and a half ago on brass tacks, this issue was brought up and spoken to at length of contracts. And I want to make it clear, if everyone here did not hear it, that Senator Jerome Walcott said clearly that it's not on the table as yet. The GS of the NUPW requested that it be articulated in a white paper. The NUPW, we will, Team Vision for the Win, will definitely be encouraging, before we speak to this, a white paper articulating the intent of the government to go forward with senior civil servants and contractual work we need to have it articulated in a white paper. That said, we will be advocating and lobbying for that to be done before we speak to that. That's number one. The second part of his question had to do with the taxes and the pensions. Now, people entering the civil service before 1975 are paying taxes on the back and they're paying taxes on the front. The idea of that too many civil servants occurs as too much and unfair. We are looking at that. Number three, what we cannot ever forget is the trade union is the model for the private sector, for the public sector, how to employ people, what employee and employer relations should look like. This is the model that we are presenting. We're, we can't take that out of our heads. Now, a few speakers back, we heard that perhaps the NUPW and its leadership and my esteemed colleagues who were part of that, in large part, lost the vision of the NUPW, part of that executive. Now- Sorry, repeat that one. What? Sorry. I didn't hear that. So I didn't, our, I didn't understand it. So Is somebody lost the vision, who? So who? perhaps the leadership of the NUPW- When you say leadership, you're talking about the executive or the, or the council? The executive, not the- do you do you you get the the relationship between the executive and the national council? The national council directs in large part the um, actions of the president, but the executive carries out or moves forward A, B, and C. So let me just give you an example. Team Vision for the Win wants to make sure that the members' monies, little bit that they are, are continually stepping up, working for them. Fabian was speaking about entrepreneurship. It's social entrepreneurship, making sure that when they are go gone home, you don't know anybody that only works one job. These young people coming up behind all of us here, they're not doing one thing for income. They're doing two, three, four things. They're not staying in a job for five, 10, 15 years. They're not interested. Their interest is to make sure that what the income that they're bringing in, whether it's from the public service, whether it's from herding goats, whether it's from making pepper sauce, whether it's from making bread or, or growing flowers, whatever it is, that they have a marketplace for it. And we're suggesting that marketplace is within NUPW membership. 
trading inter membership, sound fiscal management. You see, we are thinking. We're not relying on the traditional sources. Members and workers have to start rel relying on themselves to turn over their money, their monies. So investing in something alternative to your salary is going to bring in more and more money. And we are pre pre presenting the space and the membership as trading partners. Now, that's not a hard thing to do. It just takes vision and initiative and sound fiscal management. Perhaps that was not present in the past. Fabian, you, you had something more, I think. Uh, yes, um, my comment was in relation to the, the contracts. Um, I just wanted to add that, you know, um, <clears throat> we have to ensure uh, transparency and that's where the trade union movement will come in to lobby for transparency in the allocation of contracts. Um, terms and conditions will also be key as well. Um, and I want to also add that, um, or repeat, that there's some pros and cons when it comes to contracts. But there's a concept that we haven't introduced in Barbados as yet, um, one by the name of the contractor general. We usually see it in other countries in relation to, um, it comes into integrity legislation, and we see them in the allocation of commercial contracts, like for building buildings and roads and so on. So I'm thinking that um, but we don't quite have our integrity legislation up and running as yet. But I believe that seeing that we have this talk of contract work um, coming up, I believe that the discussion in labor should be for the, the creation of, if not a, a post or a panel that will serve the, um, like a watchdog group, you know, um, to regulate the allocation of, um, of contracts. So it'd be a contractor general as a person or a group to um, carry out that rule. Um, also, I want to add that in terms of um, of the survival and to tie in the whole cost of living thing again, um, I also want to say, um, I also want to add that we'll be pursuing um, community linkages and playing a facilitation role in terms of helping members to, to source um, what services they need. Some persons don't know sometimes that, for, for instance, our disabled community may not know, may not be aware of the services in a particular government or non-government department. And we are going to, and we're actually in the process of doing a database of service-oriented um, organizations. And we want to play a facilitation role. I mean, it could be churches involved there, community groups, NGOs. We want to have um, various um, memoranda of understanding um, to be with vocational training board and UV and BCC, SJP, PI, you know, things to help make the burden easier. So I just want to tackle the whole cost of living issue okay. and touch on contracts one more time again. Okay, Emmanuel Joseph is saying, suggestion on boosting the union's revenues, boost up the Aki Furo Auditorium and make it a conference center, introduce mm -hmm. merchandising such as t-shirt with messaging that brings greater awareness to the members with respect to unionism and some of the benefits which members can derive from, be, uh, from being members. Key mm -hmm. rings, mugs uh, are some of the things that he's addressing. In this way, the union would be making extra money by selling these items for a small fee and at the same time be educating members. Also, the union ought to educate members on consumerism a consumer law, industrial relation, and cost on customers and customer care. This list of suggestions is not exhaustible. So he thank you, Emmanuel. He suggests what we're somebody. talking about. Um, another comment: Union should also create innovative way of um, creating economic growth. I believe union should be running run as a business in these times, creating employment for members, relatives, and families. So the problem. Another comment here, the problem with the type of contracts, uh, um, contract work is that it's disadvantaged 
uh, it disadvantages many young people in terms of them building a sound future for themselves. On the other hand, giving public servant contract to do work that holds a permanent status contract of service is unconstitutional. Many areas must be tackled to eradicate this type of stuff, like retirement, age, pension, creating economic growth, placing emphasis on the country, economic strength. So those are just some of the comments that are coming. Now, as we, we, we will soon wrap up, one of the things that we want to, and, and I'm getting a number of messages on it, and, and forgive me because um, the people are asking, um, sorry, John Mark, my, my baby, Okay, a question here from John Mart and Fabian, you could probably break it down so you can take it. My question is to Fabian, before I was a member of the union, I was involved with your 2017 campaign. How did, how did I know you will not commit these? Okay, ignore that question. I sorry, should have read out before I read out that. Okay, so ignore that question. Right, so um, I know some persons are looking at the fact that some of you guys were on the campaign trail before. Um, but that doesn't mean that you can't go again. Um, it doesn't mean if they wanted to, they should go again themselves if they don't want you to risk. That's just my personal opinion. However, people have been asking as it relates to the whole controversy surrounding the union, um, of the union, union president, the Kenny McDowell, and another person have been concerned about the whole issue. I haven't, I could be honest with you guys, I haven't heard anyone from your team made any comment, any public comment or otherwise and on this particular topic, but I know that it is a topic that must be looked at. Um, it is something that you are to address. I, I, you did all, most of you indicated that you are a part of the National Council, which is a decision-making body of the union. But people are concerned about this type of behavior in the union. And I would say behavior in the sense that um, both Rosnick Smith would have been, or uh, is now going through some legal recourse with the union. We are now seeing um, this with now um, uh, Kenny and uh, Mardell and his position and the suspension and being removed as a member and all of whatever is going on in the union. And people are starting to wonder if the union um, is disregarding um, people after a certain time where they don't want them or because of the riff on the raft. Um, people are still trying to understand if the race would also only be between your two teams or being that the person is suspended if the person can still contest at a later date if the per, if the matter could be resolved before election day um can anyone give us some insight uh, I, I don't want you to speak to anything that you don't want to but as it relates to this matter and this continuous um uh, infighting that has now spilled over because one of the things that i don't want you to be uh, naive of the fact is that we as the public are seeing things we are hearing things. It is in the public domain. It is in the WhatsApp messages. It is on the news. And it, it, it somehow does not build or take away from what the union has built because people are frustrated about what they're seeing. People may have a liking to Fabian. People may have a liking to Kimberly. People may have a liking to Akani. And all of this could create some sort of issue or have rather created issue within the, the, the union. How do you address matters like these going forward? And what, do you, what is your plan um, as it relates to this? And can you shed some light on this particular situation? Anyone that want to take it? Well. No, Fabian's going. No, go ahead, Fabian. Okay, um, you alluded to the whole situation with um, Sister Smith. And, you know, um, you know she's... Uh, she's pursued litigation in relation to um, retirement and so on. And I, I believe that the issue right there is the lack of succession planning. Mm -hmm. And Team Vision, that is actually on our manifesto. Um, we're going to treat the succession plan in a way that we have a, a process, an acceptable process and transparent process um, in terms of how our GSs are appointed, um, how they transitioned. Yes? One, um, just some of the recent displays, I wasn't a uh, part of that, so I can't really, I really have no defense for a person's behavior, you know? Um, but I felt the, 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 I felt the pain as well. Um, when persons criticize the union, you know, 
they criticize me as well. I'm on the I'm on the council, and they think like what we don't hinder, we allow. And I'm glad that the council, as the highest um, policy making body outside of the annual conference, I'm glad the council is seeing treating to their um, <clears throat> to the administration of the union in a way that they should have a long time. Um, I wish to thank Brother McDowell for his service. What has happened has happened, you know, but I'm looking forward and seeking to put the union on that trajectory. So as you see, I don't really have a lot to, I can't explain, uh, and I won't be apologetic for a person's behavior. I'm speaking, I'm presenting team vision here, <laughs> you know, so. But, but I, if I ask a question, I ask a question. The, you said the National Council, which some of you all are members of, is that correct? Yes, please. So if the National Council would have make it, or taken a stance or made a decision, it would have also include members here from the team. Yes. And so is it, if I may ask, I'm just being, just forgive me, I play devil's advocate here. Um, wouldn't it seem as disadvantage, a disadvantage to the person where members who are also vying to be president of a union can make a decision or have made a decision to also expel, suspend somebody who is also playing for the same position, wouldn't that seem a little bit disproportionate in a sense? Well, we are members, we have our vote, and we are a few members, um, you know, they're like 30, 40 more. So um, at the end of the okay, day- so it's a wider body. Okay. It's a wider body and democracy and common sense and wisdom will have prevailed. Okay, fair enough. Okay, that is your your part of it. That's that Kim really wanted to address. All right. Hi. Um I don't want to dwell on the controversial side of things. I know that it was played out in the public domain, which is quite unfortunate. However, um there were times before that past general secretaries and past presidents were sanctioned and disciplined and censored by the National Council. So this move by the National Council is not new. It is under the ambit of the National Council based on the rules of the organization. And so um, whatever comes out of it, whether for or against, it was done based on the rules of the organization. Um, you asked a question in turn, I guess, probably to shed, to cast a little shadow on person's integrity, but this is why we say in defense to my team. Oh, no, 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 I didn't do uh -huh. it to cast any aspiration on anyone. It's just questions that are coming through that persons have asked me to ask for the show. Okay, so it so is no I way will, in any, respond. yeah, it's no way in order to, to I have nothing to gain from it. If I'm it, I'm not a member of the union. As I said, okay. I'm just putting the questions that I can get. No problem. Well, um, in the absence of the president, the chairs of the meeting would be assigned based on the seniority of the vice presidents. I am the current third vice president. And so when the, this issue was being discussed, the meeting, the counselors wanting to maintain the integrity of the decision because persons on my team, both Brother Boston, who is the current second vice president, and myself, the third vice president, we would have been the persons to chair the meetings in the absence of the president and the first vice president. And so at those two meetings, the, the counselors would have moved a motion that both Brother Boston and myself recuse ourselves from the chair. So an independent chairman was chosen from amongst the counselors. So it cannot then be seen or shown that we, we steered the meeting in a particular direction. So that was something that the council made sure to, to, to see, you know, that the integrity of the decision be, be kept. And so, as I said before, it is sad that this, was, this has played out in the public domain this has happened before. All organizations have some level of infighting. However, as I said, it's really sad that ours, our dirty linen had to be aired so openly. And these moves that would have been made before, because when I came into National Council, there was always a joke about, take care, carry you, Corey Street, 
take care, care of your core street, meaning because because members were known to always take each other to court. That was always an internal joke. But these things would only be known if you check the records of NUPW and not checking the, the archives of Barbados Today or the Nation or the Advocate. So that is something that would have changed the, the dynamic as it relates to this particular issue. Okay, okay, fair enough. I mean, obviously, this, as I said, this particular issue has uh, had a lot of implication on persons. And I know you all went to GS in terms of you all were seeking you, um, the, the thing that would have been the motion that would have been brought to have a GS. So I know a number of things played out and persons obviously watching. I am watching because, as again, um, these are important things to the Barbadian landscape. The union is an important body. So obviously there are things that people see. There are things that people are questioning. There are things that we are still wondering in our head, what is going on? Uh, we haven't heard any remarks. So this is important and healthy because again, we're, we're, we're talking with two teams here that either you don't want to be making the same mistakes of the press presidency or um, in the sense that I'm not saying the anything was done in failure or whatever, but you want to be able to learn from those mistakes. You want to be able to carry forward certain things as it relates to the union. So these are things that the, the public will want to see. And these, you know, the in-house matters or the in-house dwellings of the union be kept on the inside. I mean, certain things will escape because of whatever, for whatever reason. Um, but uh, as two persons vying for the position with your team, obviously there's a lot of things that the union and members will expect to change. Um, they would want to see a, a better and a more transparent um, union. I'm hearing also from the comments um, of the you know annual reports not coming out or not coming out in times. So there are things that people are saying that they will want to see in the union. Um, or they hope that would be changed underneath your um, your membership. I'm uh, again, these are things that we are just hoping to see. And that, Kamar, sorry, the members. Yes, Kamar, if I may, really quickly. Go ahead. I don't want people to go away thinking that somebody was unfair. This is not the case. The that National the Council took an immediate decision based on the actions of two members. They made an immediate decision. The entire National C Council took that decision, number one. Mm. The suspended president made it clear that he was interested in being a secretary general, not a president, a secretary general. Mm. Service was his intention to be a secretary general. The post was not created, the post was not there, but the suspended president was interested in that. There was nothing untoward about the National Council acting. Now, it was literally a response to actions ta taken, okay? Well, fair enough. Right. I, I mean, I, if you're here to clear the air, you're, the, you're part of the council, you can clear it. I don't know how the process was. I'm just going by questions and you guys go by obviously giving us the, the answers that would obviously go um, with that. And so um, based on the comments or whatsoever, people are okay with it. I haven't heard any feedback on it. But it is also good to know, and I think that that is where the public relations part needs to be a little bit spooked up, that we the naive public or we, the, the public that way with public perception or whatever the case maybe can be a piece of what is going on and not have to go away with what we feel um, transpired or however the case may be, right? So that is it. Kimar, um, Simon, you have any further questions? On my part, no further questions, but I, I think that um, even as we wrap up shortly, mm -hmm. um, it is clear that the, the move for the union will be going back towards the whole membership being the focus. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not too sure if um, over the years, some may argue that the union began to, to lose its way rather than being member focused. Um, it became a bit more occupied with other things, but it's good to know that both sides that are contesting to represent the union in leadership positions have a clear understanding of the needs of its constituents and also 
what is necessary to carry the union forward. Uh, there's a different time we're in the 21st century. We have pandemics, we got ash fall, we got um, unemployment, um, we have a high cost of living. There's so many things facing the, um, the working people of Barbados. So I do believe that not only does the union have to strategize and become a, a lot more, not necessarily aggressive, but a lot more um, effective in how it does things and also to make sure it, it forms the necessary partnerships with the various players in the marketplace, whether in the private sector or our government or otherwise. So I just wish everyone all the best. And thanks for being on the program. Yeah, uh, Tony, yeah, just read this, uh, uh, John, uh, Ton, uh, sorry, she's uh, Ton La Marsha, she's saying, I agree with you, it seems the union will be in good hands as the union will be putting members first. So I guess people are agreeing that if the members for members are first, then the right. union will be in a good hand um, and so on and so forth. So that is good to hear that that is what people want for the members to be seen as people's first. Keep yeah, going. right. Um, I guess I'm looking forward to the breath of fresh air um, coming into the union leadership. I think the union has not been a public embarrassment, if I say quite frankly, uh, over periods of time. Um, coming out from this show, I, I, I mean, I, I can't vote, but I personally you know, have a I, I heard it all about, I heard it said that we could join the member. Is it true that <laughs> other persons outside of the union could join members? I just, outside the public workers. Outside the public workers. Sorry, somebody speak to that. Um, we have um, a facility where we have honorary members, but you have to be coming in for a particular program. So for our Medicare, Mm. Our Medicare program have a lot of packages that you can take part in that mm. cater to our members. That is what the NUPW Insurance Agent Inc. is for. Okay. So it sells insurance to our members. So in order mm. to take advantage of the, the lovely packages that we have, one, one, um, one of the best medical plans on island, we have at the NUPW Insurance Agent Inc. with Sajikar, and we mm. have just well, I think over a year now, we have included a small um, death, death benefit. I think it's $25,000 and you pay $13.50 a month for that $25,000 at death. a big death. Funeral, yeah. Yeah, and you <laughs> also- You gotta put down. You gotta get right, off, but man. you also still have to pay your, your $13 for an associate member. So for that, you is that a voting? Pick, is that a voting? A voting? Yeah, it thing? gives you the right to vote, okay. so you can okay. tip. You can. You like that, right, Kimar? You like that? <laughs> so for twenty six dollars, <laughs> if you're not interested in being represented on the IR level, for th for twenty six dollars as well, you can, you can get yeah, that benefit. Be part of the, that, and yeah, medical. so you can take part in the medical the medical program. You can do the death benefit, and I think the Medicare would have just extended the death benefit up to persons that are 80 years old. I think the cutoff mark was 60, but but I don't think the 80 year olds get um, the 25,000 for obvious reasons. I think they get $5,000 at death, which is still a pretty decent yeah. friends and family after the funeral. <laughs> so, that cremation, that cremation <laughs> correct. But yeah, persons outside of the public service can take advantage of that and they still have the right to, to vote. Kimari, you yeah. said something that I wanted to comment on in terms of what transpired over the past couple of weeks, mm -hmm. but not only the past couple of weeks. Um, Kimar Safri or Kimar Stewart? Kimar Safri, oh. sorry. Okay. Um, in terms of um, going forward, we have realized that our constitution because we rely solely on our rules and the standing orders of the organization we have recognized over the past five years or so that there are plenty loopholes within our constitution um, and sometimes good or bad persons can say oh i this is this is in the rules I am following the rules. So we have recognized that there are quite a lot of loopholes yeah, within our constitution. And mm -hmm. that is one thing that um, that Team New Guard will put on the priority list, a definite constitutional reform committee, because it needs to happen in order for NEPW to go forward. It must happen.
Right. My last question on the close, give everybody the chance to for on two minutes. How do you feel about right. it? I, my, I, I didn't oh, get it. Sorry, didn't get to... sorry Kumar. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, Kumar. yeah let, let, let's start the next. Oh, you, you oh sorry, go ahead. Sorry. You, yeah, you you um you know you think. Uh right, well, what I was saying that I think I think definitely I will look forward to um the new leadership. Uh, hopefully, I would, I would you know in some type of capacity, I would interact uh, with the leadership as it relates to um, the future of the country. Uh, I, I think right now the union plays a huge role um, in terms of those public servants who may be on edge as it relates to the like, changes and the like that may come. Uh, even the, the like some low income persons, like the shops and the like. If, if you can recall, a lot, a lot of shops stores and a lot of shop owners and like were affected by like uh, the COVID lockdowns and, and like so I, I definitely looking forward to see what innovative ideas uh, will come out to protect workers rights um, and I look forward to the workers benefiting because it seems that the workers really have not been benefiting uh, much from from union representation overall um, so I would congrats um, early out to both of you, Kimberly and Fabian, when our loss. Uh, like I said, you guys have a vision that can intertwine and work together. So I hope that um, after the presidential vote that you would um, you not know, team up and try to see where you can help each other as uh, definitely the union and the members will definitely benefit if you two can work together. Thank you, Vima. Um, so, right, so just last question for everybody. I give everybody two minutes to which they can respond to it. How do you feel about your particular campaign? How do you feel about your uh, contesting your post? How has been the responses from the people? And how confident are you um, in, in winning this particular um, post that you are vying for? So I'll leave the two presidents for last and I can go, I will go with um, Daria and then I'll go straight across to the other two members and leave the presidents for last. So in two minutes, how have it been? You know, how is your confidence level and what, if you want to include in there, anything else you can in your closing remarks. Thank you, uh, Kimar, Simon and Kimar. You know, there, there are three words that really wrap up what I'm interested in with the NUPW. Multilateralism, multilateralism, multilateralism bringing together the members, leadership, the participation of stakeholders. Mm -hmm. Civil society has to work with governments, has to work with businesses, has to work with trade unions, has to work with even media. We have to get this thing right if we're going forward as a society. If we focus on the intergenerational, the, the, the multi-participating stakeholder in terms of partnerships, we have the opportunity, all of us, to not only get grow our wealth, but we're growing each other personally and societally. My interest is making sure that the training is working well, making sure that the fiscal management of the union is working well, and making sure that we are looking at innovative ways to grow the members and the NUPW. If these things are handled well and we have the plan for it, we have the people for it, we will go forward well. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. And we can go to Mr. Smith. Hi, good night once again. Um, our main focus and my main focus, as Tim Lee was saying, is member engagement. Um, unfortunately, we have this tendency to do a lot of things top down, but for the unit to be for the unit to be to be successful and sustainable, it has to be a bottom up approach, where we understand what are the members' issues, and how we, as executive council members, can can assist assist um, these members. 
my interaction with with members of the of the union in this campaign has, has been very very encouraging um i sit down i have serious conversations i listen and and that is a very key important thing we must do we must listen attentively and we must also listen with our eyes because our person may tell you something about their facial expression say something totally different and you, and you need to understand those things as my, my focus is is on the youth and one of the main important things is promoting youth involvement in industrial relations the young people must be educated within their about their rights within their workplace and how the, the union can assist them where, where, where they fall down. As Simon said, we are in a whole different era now. So about reaching members using social media. Social media is going to be very important for the unit to get its message out there as well. And that is yeah. where we need to go. We have no choice. As COVID has proven, things didn't the same. Things will never be the same. So we have to move. And young people are social media person. You want to force like me? I just try a thing. But the young people don't try. The young people are with it. So that is our focus, getting all our information out to the young people on social media so that and they can respond to us on social media with their issues. Thank you very much and have a good night, everyone. Thank you. All right. Uh, John? Yes. Um, for me, what I love most about my team is that I've known these persons for a while and I didn't know they're passionate about unionism, especially about the affairs of the National Union of Public Workers. And I feel very confident in my chances as well as my team members. I know they come from a good place and I know that once we are given the opportunity to serve, that we will make sure that we do the best of our ability to serve our members. As stated um, from um, earlier, my role is more from an education standpoint in terms of promoting the Public Workers Academy and use the education um, to, to empower our members. But also what we have to do as a team is that we, we, we need to listen to our members like O'Brien said, and as we have been pushing um, for the whole night is we need to put our members first. And I do believe that we, our chances are good. I know we are in a good place. Um, I've worked with Kimberly and O'Brien uh, from the Youth League um, division of the NEPW. So I've known them for many years and I understand the, you know, the passion that they have for our organization and putting our organi organization um, to, to the forefront so that people can be proud to be associated with the National Union of Public Workers. So once again, thank you for the opportunity and you know, we hope to serve the members as we have been saying from earlier. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Um, just so, sorry, I didn't do it before. Um, O'Brien, what position are you running for again? Third Vice President. Third Vice President, John? Um, running for second Vice President. Second Vice President. And uh, Daria, sorry, what? That would be first vice president, Mr. Zachary. Okay, first vice. Okay, good. Okay, oh, thank yeah. you. And so we go over to I'll leave, I'll leave the lady for last in this one. <laughs> I'll go over to Fabian, uh, who is uh, Fabian Jones, who's running for um, president of the NUPW in the upcoming um, election. Sorry, somebody just give me the date and time date again for the election. Pardon? That would be July the fifteenth. July 15th. Okay, so just uh, just show you two weeks. Just show you about uh, be 16 days or so to go. Okay, so go ahead, Fabian. Okay, the, the feedback from a white cross section of the membership has been overwhelming. You know, persons have just been offering advice, offering support in whatever way they like the, the new blood approach. Mm -hmm. You know, um, some of them have. Okay, my battery just gave me a warning. Um, some some have given us the no blood approach. Um, sorry, told us that they love the no blood approach. You know because they see um, they see some contamination there right now. You know with persons that there a long time and not getting it right and so on. Um, I feel good about that. Our message has been clear, concise, and comprehensive. Um, persons tend to like that. How we ground it in philosophy and then we have practical. Um, 
we have practical scenarios that people can connect with. The union is going through a renaissance right now. And we believe that team, team vision for the workers' interests now. And with our clean and inspirational campaign, we have literally written down the members' concerns um, over a number of years. And this clean and inspirational campaign, we believe, will see us through. Um, we understand that we have a lot of challenges. Um, and we speak to the people in such a way that they understand um, the things that are going on around them um, socioeconomically. Like, for instance, there's a whole neoliberalist paradigm that we're dealing with that will shape the way in which our government as a third world country would have to treat to the country economically. You know, we borrow money, we're a third world country, we don't really produce heavily, so there are going to be conditions and so on. And some of these conditions will not be worker friendly. So our social democratic roots will help us to always position ourselves for whatever ball the, the, neo, the neoliberalists, which is a pro-capital um, agenda, whatever that brings to us and it's anti-labor. So what? So having under, um, understood that and explained that to the workers in simple terms, they understand that we are ready for whatever ball, whether it's a bouncer, whether it's a, a full toss, a yark or whatever, team vision, we are ready. And um, this is coming from the young, this is coming from the old, this is coming from the disabled. Um, you know, um, last time I made good inroads with a, a sling and a stone against a great machinery. I have no reason to fear it this time. And we are coming now, I have my team of 300 now, and we plan to do some serious um, movement on the ground to inspire the workers and to create the conditions to move NUPW forward and up. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Kimberly Agard, who is also applying for the presidency of the NUPW. Over to you. Hi again. Um, so the energy that we have been getting on the ground and from persons approaching me or us on face-to-face -face has been great. The energy is there. Persons are welcoming the change. They're um, the female leader, primarily, especially to um, persons are are comfortable with the team in terms, as I said from the beginning, the right the the right blend, the perfect blend. Um, I know you asked about team members, and so I will say the other persons um, are from the team. We have Mr. Charles Boste, who works at the Electoral and Boundaries Commission. He is going for our first vice president. And we would like to congratulate Pamela Humphrey and Roy Greenwich for going unopposed for the post of general treasurer and deputy treasurer. So once again, the finances of the union remain in good hands. So I would like to congratulate them now. So they have already secured their, their place. Once team New Guard is given the opportunity we will put the workers first. We will try to stick to everything that we have discussed and, and, and formalized here. We will try to do what is best for the organization, put the members first, build the organization, put members in a very stable position, let NUPW be a force to be reckoned with once again, locally, regionally, and internationally. We have lost that and we will work on that for in the immediate future, once we have become um, the new executive, John would have said that we work together as uh, on the youth committee. And I think at that time, I won't leave you out, Fabian, you were part of that committee as well. But under my leadership, we would have done great things. I don't think that there was ever a youth league as good as us since we left. But I know that my team, we are committed. We are knowledgeable. We are open-minded. We are going to be very respectful of the, the members and their wishes and the rules and standing orders of the organization. We will include the secretariat and the particular divisions into our decision making. We will look to re-engage the shop stores because as Key Marshall would have said, my pitch sounds a little grassroots, but I don't want to say grassroots. I want to say in tuned. I want to change that word from grassroots to in tuned because right. I have been listening. I have been seeing and I have been paying attention 
to what is needed. I would have been around the table for a while. Other persons were there in the leadership role. And I believe now is the time for my team and I to make a difference or to try to bring about the change that is needed to make NUPW and the trade union movement relevant 77 years and in 2021 and beyond. Thank you, good night, and thank you for having me. Thank you for the viewers and the comments, the contributions online. I'm sorry that I was not able to see some of the comments that came through, but I want to thank you, Kimar, Kimars, <laughs> and Simon for having my team and I. Um, I think that we welcome the exposure, and I look forward to engaging with you um in the near future if you want to have us again feel free that's not a problem we can do it again but uh, i want to say thanks to you and thanks to the members and i look forward to your support come july 15th to making team new guard the new executive of the nupw thank you thank you very much i see um pamela humphrey is also she was online most of the time as well so she's saying thank you yeah, uh, she's appreciated. So appreciate it. She right. appreciates it. So that's, that's one of the members that you would have mentioned. Fabian, um, you want to mention the other of members? Course. Yes, please. Of course, right. So I have a powerhouse like Comrade David Denny. Um, you know, he's a veteran candidate. He would have tried. And what I respect about Denny is that he always gets up and comes back and I believe that is Denny's time now. Mm -hmm. You know, um, he's an activist, a humanitarian at heart, and someone whom I looked up to, you know. Um, even before I was in the activist world. Brother Danny was out there representing. And what position? What position he's going for? So he's going for the position of second vice president on this second team. Second vice president. And your next yes. member? We have Sister Matlita King. Mm -hmm. That's M C L I T A. Matlita, mm -hmm. and she is a, a veteran um, <clears throat> member of the SSA. She's been involved in committees for a long time. She has served on council. She's very experienced, knowledgeable, and she's coming from a, a powerhouse division that has not being elevated to a level um, for a division that gives, that has given so much to the union. Whenever we have um, conflicts and so on, the SSA can always come out and give us that support. And I believe that um, there were times when the SSA, when that support was not reciprocated. Last time I fielded a candidate from SSA, Steve, brother Stephen Edwards, he did very well, he even outdid me. I know we have Sister McLeet and I'm expecting great, expecting great things from her. Um, and because I believe the SSA needs that elevation as well. Um, they have paid their dues to the NUPW, and I believe that they deserve to have a bigger voice on the executive um, in the union. Well, that is the team, the Team New Guard, um, which is being run by Kimberly and Team Vision for a win, for the win with uh, Fabian Jones. So we hope that everyone goes out on the 15th and really rally around the, the union. Uh, Mark, you know, it, yes, please. So sorry. It's team vision for the workers' interests now. Okay. But I think is it call it team for the win. Win team. Okay. Sorry. Uh, we we sure it um, at that point, you know, but we like it to, to flow out. Workers' okay. interests now. Okay, team vision for the workers' interest now. Interest now. Right, so, okay, no problem. Like it. You yeah. like it. Yeah. It, it says it, it all, but it doesn't say it. It does say it all. Fair enough. But well, we want to thank each and all every right. one of you for coming on on the show. Um, it's always good, too, that we could bring the two teams together. So we were really happy to see both teams could come together, sit down and have a good conversation um, and be balanced and be fair to the people and be able to get over, and, or as young people say, overs what well, you have to over in a, in, a, in a cordial way. So we do appreciate it. We know that it took a lot of everybody, but we appreciate it. Um, to end off, we want to also say thank you to all the persons that have been viewing, that have been leaving comments, uh, that have been reaching out, both that have been supporting both of you guys' team as well. So that is something that is, thing. please uh, remember to follow us, like us. We'll be back here again next week, Tuesday. We hope that Obviously, whoever takes the win, we'll be able to bring you back on as well or closer to the time, bring you on to see what you have to offer. Um, three things before we go. We just want to tell you, obviously, the, with the hurricane season approaching fast. Appro well, we're in the hurricane season to mm -hmm. please get those necessary things that you need to supplies, get to yeah. supplies and uh, safeguard yourself. Simon, I know you were a big part of the, the whole um, disaster management. Uh, both my Kim Lee do say as chairpersons for 
or uh, for the district emergency Dio. organization, mm -hmm. the DO. So we'll go to that. Um, but we're encouraging you, I don't want to leave because we are in the hurricane season. Please prep yourself, prep your family. Please um, stock up on supplies. Don't wait till last minute. Um, we also have to close on a very sad note about it. We, also, we want to obviously offer condolences to the prime minister who would have just lost her brother, um, Warren Motley. So our condolences to the prime minister and her family. And we hope that Barbados, as we know that she is prime minister, please let us give her the time that she and her family needs to be able to grieve at this moment. And so that she can continue the work of the country once she is full and in, um, you know, I've sure her family has overcome this time that they're going through because loss is something that all of us are uh, prone to. So mm -hmm. just because you're a leader doesn't mean that she doesn't need the time for her and her family. So please, if you can share your condolences to the prime minister, let her know that she's loved at this time. And on that note, we want to say thank you very much, everyone. On Facebook, we are going to close you off right now. And again, like the page, follow us, and have a blessed and wonderful night. Stay safe, stay blessed, follow the COVID protocols as well. Stock up for hurry.